Hello again, and welcome to part 9 of Building Your Own Server. Um, right, since I spoke to you last, I've installed the um, six strips of memory. Um, I actually purchased GEEL, I think it's pronounced, G-E-I-L. I purchased um, a pack of hexa, hexa channel memory. It's actually um, six strips of four gigabytes. So there's a 20, total of 24 gigabytes uh, in here each. I put 12 gig per processor, basically being a, a dual processor uh, setup. That went in without a hitch at all. Um, so I was pleased about that. The only other thing which um, I've done since then is um, attached the cables for the on-off switch and all the front panel um, switches and connections. Um, I've had a bit of a problem regards that insofar as on the front of this particular case there are four USBs. So there are two leads um, each feeding a pair of USBs each. Unfortunately this particular motherboard only has one internal connection for a USB. Um, so two of those uh, USB connections on the front are currently uh, redundant, which is a shame really. Um, so I've been looking around for a USB expansion card, which I can put inside the computer um, and that would then allow me to um, connect up as uh, those second two USBs at the front. I have found one by a company called NZXT um, and I've spoken to a retailer here in Western Australia and um, they're going to try and find out if they can obtain it uh, and also if they can, they can obtain a price. So I've got my fingers crossed regarding that because at the moment otherwise those two USBs at the front will be, or two of them, will be redundant. Um, other things which uh, I've come across, oh yes, um, once I'd connected up all the internal um, switches, um, cabling, um, I switched the computer on um, and it went through its normal post setup and then it, uh, it booted into the BIOS. However, when I actually got the BIOS screen up, it was only reading three of the four hard drives. Um, it was not reading the uh, hard drive in bay one. This flummoxed me quite a bit. Um, at first I thought it could have been a faulty connection behind here. Then I thought it could have been a faulty connection on the motherboard itself. Uh, then I also wonder whether or not it might have been a hard drive that was faulty. It was none of those things actually, even though I went through all those usual checks. It transpires that these hot swappable bays, um, when they actually go back uh, into uh, a, a, a match up with the electrical connections on the inside of the case, um, despite Corsair's quality control, um, one of them wasn't actually lined up correctly. And when the, uh, when the hard drive was being pushed back, rather than going into the uh, connector, it was actually sliding underneath the connector. Um, wasn't obvious at first, um, but after a while of, of looking in there and, and, and shining a torch inside to see exactly what was going on, I was able to identify the problem. This meant then I had to get um, a screwdriver in there and lever the connection down. Fortunately, it's quite pliable. Um, and after I levered it down, it then married up correctly and I managed to get it to work. So, um, like most builds, I suppose, not without its teething problems, but it has booted up to the bias without any problems now. Um, the only thing I need to be considering is whether I need to update the BIOS 
Um, it's not necessary, but there are later biases on the internet for this particular motherboard, so I may do that. And then once that's done and uh, achieved, then the next step will be to um, install the operating system. And this particular server is going to have um, Small Business Server 2008 installed. And for my final um, YouTube video, I will actually run through um, a basic install of uh, SBS 2008. There are a, a number of those already on YouTube, so I'm going to be picking up on some of the um, issues which I think um, a person and an end user uh, in a business environment, some of the things that they might consider uh, to be useful uh, tips um, to, to take into account when you are actually installing um, Small Business Server 2008. But this that concludes this uh, this setup uh, as far as I can as far as I can say now. There's nothing extra that I need to be doing this. I didn't end up buying another fan. Uh, I'm going to consider how the temperatures stack up in a, in, in a real life environment when this thing's working on, on full load. It would be a very simple uh, case of just um, installing a fan down here. Um, hardly any effort at all involved. So I might leave that for the time being. Anyway, thank you very much for, uh, for listening. And uh, happy building if you get around to doing your own server in the near future.